Welcome to the Dr. Bhatia Medical Coaching Institute and eGurukul. I am Dr. Ramya, I teach obstetrics and gynecology. So in this video, we are going to discuss the previous year questions. So welcome to the PYQ series. So let us not waste time. Let us try to grab the previous year questions and imbibe into our brain. So continuation. Right. So this is also a one of the uh, previous year question that is how to uh, how to tell about the position of the fetus in this image. Actually, I have already posted one video on the position. So I'll be a little quick here. Position may always remember three things are important. One is whether it is right here, left side. Second, what is the denominator? Third, whether it is anterior or posterior. I keep it as three fill in the blanks. So now this is a longitudinal line. This is a cephalic presentation with vertex as the presenting part. And we all know that vertex may always the denominator is occiput. So here is the occiput. So occiput. Now my right and patient's right will be always ulta. So this is my right. So this is the patient's right. This is the left. So this is right. Occiput is facing towards the pubic symphysis but one eighth away. So right occipito anterior. If you, are, if you want a detailed explanation, very recently I have released one YouTube where we have done this image based question. So you can again have a look in that. So this is a previous year MCQ. This is one of the previous year MCQ. Okay. So as the denominator is occiput, I have written occiput. So occiput is which side? Right side. So it has come right. And as it is towards the pubic symphysis, we are going to call it as right occipital anterior. Most common position. On the whole is LOT, L-O-T, left occipital transverse. Most common position in labor, obviously all babies have to rotate. So most common position in labor is L-O-A. Okay. The causative agent associated with this image. So if you see, there is a Aedes mosquito which is taking the virus. So the virus is undergoing transplacental transmission and is mainly affecting the developing fetal brain. So it is mainly affecting the fetal brain. So which is the virus which affects the fetal brain and causes microcephaly? Is it cytomegalovirus? Is it Zika virus? Is it parvovirus or rubella virus? So rubella virus mainly causes, causes congenital rubella syndrome which includes a triad of Sensory neural hearing loss, cataract, and patent ductus arteriosus. So, uh, it mainly has the triad of hearing loss, cataract, and heart lesion that is PDA. Parvovirus causes hydrops vitalis. It is the most common cause of non immune hydrops vitalis. Cytomegalovirus, most of the time, 80% of the time, they are asymptomatic and usually, uh, you know, less lethal to the baby. Zika virus is transmitted by Aedes aegypti. So whenever a mother travels to a, a endemic area of the Zika virus and mother gets infected, a mother gets uh, infected by Zika virus, then mother usually will have very few prodromal symptoms. But if it is a pregnant mother, uh, then mother can be having the problem. So it is transmitted primarily by Aedes mosquito. People with Zika virus disease have symptoms including like mild fevers, rash, conjunctivitis, muscle and joint pain and malice and headache. So they mainly present to you with rash, conjunctivitis, muscle and joint pain, malice and headache. A pregnant woman can pass Zika to her fetus during the pregnancy and at around the time of birth. So what are all the abnormalities which you see in the baby? So mainly they see the cranial abnormalities, mainly they see the cranial abnormalities. So it can cause microcephaly, cerebral or ocular calcification, ventriculomegaly, periventricular cysts, callosal abnormalities, microphthalmia, so small eyes, so microcephaly, cerebral or ocular calcification, ventricular megaly, uh, callosal, uh, callosal abnormalities, microphthalmia. Cerebellar atrophy, vermian agenesis. So, you know, brain can be completely affected here. So, mainly the whenever the virus affects the brain and causes a small brain, 
इट इज अका वायरस सो माइक्रोकेफली माइक्रोफ्थालमिया सेरिब्रल या ऑक्ला कैल्सिफिकेशन वेंट्रिकुलर मेगैली पेरी वेंट्रिक्लासिस कैलोसल अबनॉर्मैलिटीज माइक्रोफ्थालमिया सेरिबेलर एट्रोफी वर्मियन एजेनेसिस ब्लेक सिस्ट मेगा सिस्टर्ना मैग्ना कोरोइड प्लेक्सिस सिस्ट ब्रेन एट्रोफी लीडिंग टू माइक्रो एनकेफिलिप कॉर्टिकल या वाइट मैटर अबनॉर्मैलिटीज सो ऑल दीज क्रेनियल अबनॉर्मैलिटीज नेक्स्ट एक्स्ट्रा क्रेनियल अबनॉर्मैलिटीज लाइक फीटल ग्रोथ रेस्ट्रिक्शन ऑलिगोहाइड्रामनोस एंड टैलिपस so what is the virus which is causing the microcephaly of the brain it is the zika virus it is the zika virus next question see obstetric score also has been asked as a previous year mcq a 36 weeks pregnant patient had twins in previous pregnancy what is the gravida and the parity see gravida means total number of pregnancies irrespective of the outcome Now she had previously twins. Twins means one pregnancy, not nineteen months of two pregnancy. It is nine months of one pregnancy. Outcome will be two. So she had one twin delivery. She is now pregnant. So G two. Only the twin pregnancy has crossed the period of viability. So G two P one. So it is not G two P two. It is G two P one. It is neither G three because twins is considered to be one pregnancy, not two pregnancies. So G two P one again. If the twins were uh, twins are alive, means L two it will come. A patient presenting with wide discharge per vaginum on her speculum examination, showing strawberry cervix. What is the diagnosis? I think that strawberry cervix itself tells the answer. It is trichomonas vaginalis. So it's a sexually transmitted disease associated with classical, classical strawberry cervix. Classical strawberry cervix. Dichorionic diamniotic twins, thirty-eight weeks. So normally, dichorionic diamniotic you can deliver by thirty-eight weeks, thirty-seven to thirty-eight weeks. Monochorionic diamniotic it is thirty-six to thirty-seven weeks. Monochorionic monoamniotic you deliver them by thirty-two to thirty-four weeks. So dichorionic diamniotic thirty-eight weeks. monochorionic diamniotic 36 to 37 monochorionic monoamniotic 32 to 34 after giving steroids triplets 35 weeks after giving steroids so it is dichorionic diamniotic twin 38 weeks first twin breech mother has first twin is breech mother has 140 blood pressure, 140 96 blood pressure and 1 plus proteinuria. So blood pressure more than 140 90 with proteinuria. This is a mild preeclampsia. Normally mild preeclampsia also we deliver by 37 weeks. Anyway she is a dichorionic diamniotic mild preeclampsia also is there. Better to deliver her because she has crossed the 37 weeks, right? So immediate LSE is induction at 40 weeks. Immediate induction on delivery. induction if signs of preeclampsia so this is a case of mild preeclampsia with dichorionic diamniotic twins see again in exam they never give you one straight abnormality they will always give a combination so this is a case of mild preeclampsia with dichorionic diamniotic twins with first twin non vertex so as the gestational age has crossed 37 week there is no point of waiting in this patient you have to deliver her right uh but what should be the mode of delivery always remember in twins if first twin is non vertex you'll always go for vaginal uh, cesarean section first twin is vertex you'll go for vaginal delivery so as your first twin is breech it is non vertex you'll go for cesarean section so answer here will be immediate lses so answer here will be immediate lses so that is about the Uh, important PYQs in the obstetrics and gynecology. See you in the next video, guys. Thank you so much.